So now get it into our class, inshallah. Okay? But those who are lost for the words to be guided, no one can live straight. Those who are lost for the words to be misguided, no one can guide. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one God, who has no partners. And we bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa is the slave of his messenger, Amabah. Okay, now getting into today's class, okay? First and foremost, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, I'm going to welcome everybody, you know what I'm saying, to our first class after the uh, brief break, you know what I'm saying, in our classes due to the COVID and whatnot. And so this is our first class uh, getting back, you know, Tawheed movement, you know, and I want to welcome all the brothers and sisters that came to attend today for the class, and inshallah you get some benefit out of it, and, and I get some benefit as well. Today's subject, we're going to talk about plantation psychosis and the Willie Lynch papers. Plantation psychosis and the Willie Lynch papers, okay? And before we even go into that, because this is a Tawheed movement class, everything or every foundation is based on Tawheed, okay? And Tawheed means what? The oneness of Allah. Right? Or understanding or the application of the oneness of Allah. So, with that in mind, the first verse, we have certain verses or certain ayahs in Tawheed movement that we should all uh, memorize and have because these are our preambles. You know, some people have a preamble or whatnot. But for Tawheed movement, we have certain verses from the Quran that we use. You know, say the God is in our movement. The first one is chapter 51, verse 56. Inshallah, you guys write this down, highlight it, asterisk it, circle it, right, whatever, underline it. But chapter 51, verse 56. Okay? Are you ready or not? Go ahead. I'm going to read it. I'll read it in Arabic, and then I'm going to let the brother read it, inshallah. So chapter 51, verse 56, right, Tawheed movement. This is one of our, our foundations of what we believe in and, and part of our Tawheed and what we believe as Tawheed movement. This is part of our creed. Or why we do what we do and what motivates us. Allah states, I want to be like the Shaitan regime. Well, man, the Allah got to the Jinnah, what insa illa ya abudun. And a brother, inshallah, will translate it. And we have, and, and I have created the Jinn and men, I mean, subhanAllah. And I have created the Jinn, fire natured and haughty, and the ordinary people only that they may worship me. Okay. So Allah Subhanahu says in this ayah, He's telling you basically in the next year. Yes, that's the one to remember, right? Yes, sir. This is this is one of our preambles of Tawheed movement, chapter fifty-one, verse fifty-six. If you don't know chapter fifty-one, verse fifty-six, or you say that you're part of Tawheed movement, but you can't tell me what the purpose of life is and what chapter <laughs> verse is, then you ain't part of Tawheed movement. Because this is what we're gonna emphasize in every class, chapter fifty-one, verse fifty-six. Allah states, "I did not create jinn or men." So Allah Subhanahu was talking about two types of creations, okay? So now we're talking about a reality of two types of creations, okay? These are my favorite, man. Allah talking about the reality of two types of creations. He said, I did not create jinn, okay? So we're talking about jinn, and he said mankind, right? So he said the jinn and the mankind, I did not create them except that they may worship me. Right? So Allah said that the only reason why he created the jinn, the only reason why he created mankind, is that we may worship him. That's Tawheed. We're here to worship Allah. Sincerely. Right? We say, We worship you and we seek your help and your forgiveness. Only you, you Allah. Why? Because you're the one that created us. And the only reason why we're here, to, the only reason why you created us is so that we, we may worship you. Illa li ya'abudun. The root word of Ya'abudun is Abd, right? So that you can be a servant. Ain ba da. Ya'abudun. So you can be of those who be a servant to Allah. You can be an Abdullah. You can be a servant of Allah. That's the only reason why He created us. So that we can be servants of Allah spoke of Allah. Tawheed movement, right? What, is, what are we advocating? Man, we're advocating, man, we get back to the worship of Allah and everything that comes with it, right? Because the only reason why He created us is to worship Him. Okay? Also, another preamble. Okay? Another preamble of Tawheed movement. Chapter 66, verse 6. Chapter 66, verse 6. 51, 56, and 66, verse 6. These are the main two Tawheed movement. Okay? 
chapter 66, verse 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, A'udhu billahi bin shaitan rajeem, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu ku anfusikum wa ahlikum nara. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, chapter 66, verse 6, and let's not, don't get spooked out or whatnot because we see 666 up there. Right? This is 66, verse 6. Now remember the one thing about shaitan, he said that he will make everything good, bad, or that which is bad seem good. So we get spooked out when we see 666, right? 66 verse 6. But in the Quran, this is one of the most beautiful ayats. And it has a lot of wisdom and a message and a commandment in it, if we but knew. Okay? So again, Tawheed movement, our preamble, 51 verse 56 and 66 verse 6. Because if you guys go with, with our tag or Tawheed movement, we say, you know, family, life, and happiness. Tawheed movement. Family, life, happiness. That's what Tawheed movement is. And you'll see why when I discuss this ayat. So 66 verse 6, Allah subhanahu wa says, O you who believe. O you. So again, he ain't speaking to the Muslimin because if he's talking to the Muslimin, he would say, O you Muslimin. But he didn't say Muslimin. He says, O you who believe. O Mu'minin. Save yourself. He's giving you a warning. Save yourself and your family, your folks, your people, your kith, your kin, anybody that you hold dear. Save them too from what? From a fire whose fuel is men and stones. Straight up. So what is the last brother telling us in this verse? We already know in this verse, he said he only created us to worship him. Right? That's the only thing. So now he's giving us another commandment, another thing to do while we're here. Oh, you can believe, right? Guess what? Those who want to worship me like you're supposed to because that's the only reason why you're here, right? While you're here, save yourself. Save yourself. When you go into the top seer with regards to saving yourself, how do you save yourself? The Mufassideen or those who are uh, the scholars of Hadith have described this as describing what's, what, are the, the, what the Sahabas described this as. That it's a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain knowledge. Because the only way that you can save yourself from the fire is gaining knowledge of the fire or gaining knowledge of the things that will prevent you from going to the fire or having knowledge of the things that will, that will have you going into the fire so you can stop yourself from doing those things. So in this ayat, the first commandment is for the person who is the head of the household, a man, a husband, or even a woman, right, a wife, a mother. Because remember the Prophet Muhammad so -so said, everybody's going to be a shepherd and everybody's going to be accountable for their flock. The man, he's accountable for what? His wife and his kids, based on how, how he's the imam of the house, how he's the, uh, he leads the structure, the salat and everything. The woman, what's her job? She's the first one to teach the kids. Right? Before you can teach the kids, right, you got to teach yourself. You got to make sure that you save yourself. How do I save myself? Man, I got to gain knowledge and have all the tools that I need to protect myself so that I can protect myself then I can protect my kids. Right? Don't they say, look, I can't even help nobody unless I help myself first. Right? So Allah says, he tells you, man, save yourself, man. <laughs> save yourself. How do you save yourself in this thing? Gain knowledge. Knowledge of what? Man, first gain knowledge of Allah. Gain knowledge of why you're here, right? I'm only here what? To, to worship Allah, right? So then if I'm only here to worship Allah, then I want to find out what it is I can and cannot do and what I'm supposed to do, okay? Because I'm going to save myself. <clears throat> then Allah Subhanahu says, after you save yourself, after you gain knowledge, after you equip yourself with the certain tools and, and weapons and whatnot so you can deal with this daily life and worship it a lot and everything that comes with it, then go save your family, man. We say we love our family. We say we love our kids. We say we love our wives and all the men. I love you. <laughs> right? If you really love your folks and your family, right, you're going to save their soul from the hellfire. Right, we say we love somebody, but most of the time it's about material things. Oh, I love the way she looks. Oh, I love the way her eye or whatever. whatever. Oh, he bald legged. Oh, I love this, 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 that. Right? But if you really love somebody, then you're going to love their soul. Or you want the best for their soul because the soul is what lasts forever. That soul is going to last forever. The, the, the beauty and all this, the money and all that, that dies. And most of the time when that stuff dies, then you married for that or you got with somebody for that. Once that leaves, it's going to go too. 
But if you marry for the foundation, for the, for the dean, they ain't going to go because the dean ain't going to go. Right? So same thing here. Right? Save your family. Right? I'm saving myself. Now I'm going to save my family. If I really got love for my wife and my kids, right, I'm going to give them the best thing going. Islam. Right? If you ain't know the best thing going, if you ain't know it, it's Islam. Right? How, how can I give, save my family? I got to give them Islam. Right? I got to give them the best. Give them this deen. Right? Because on the day of judgment, the man, he's going to be questioned about how he raised his kids, what you teach them, what you do, what you allow them to do. The woman, she's going to be questioned about how she dealt with her husband and how she dealt with her kids. What you do? What type of example did you show them? Everybody's going to be accountable for what they had in their possession and what they were responsible for. So when you have kids, yes, it's a beautiful thing. Mm, dude, they're so beautiful. Oh, yeah, oh. But at the same time, you're going to be accountable for how you raised them. What did you give them? What type of tools? What did you nurture them with? The Prophet Muhammad said that the one who teaches his kids Islam at an early age, the deen, it mixes in with their blood. So it becomes a part of them. So if you're teaching the kids at an early age, it becomes a part of them. It becomes automatic. They ain't even got to think about it. Oh, slow nigga. Oh, slow nigga. Oh, slow nigga. They're not thinking about it. They put the hijabs on and they're not thinking about it because why? It's automatic. It's a part of their life. It's a part of their structure. They learned it at an early age. Right? Whatever you teach the kids, whatever you teach ourselves, it becomes a part of you. Okay? So we anyway, get back to this. So 51 verse 56, Allah SWT said that He created us to worship Him. Chapter 66, verse 6, right? Save yourself and your family, right? We're saving ourselves by gaining knowledge, and that's why we're here. You know, inshallah, Allah bless us to be those who gain knowledge. So one, not to gain knowledge, to, to bat people over the head and say, I got knowledge, I'm more knowledgeable than you, right? But the first thing with regards to knowledge is, man, number one, uh, 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 applying that knowledge. I'm gaining knowledge to apply the knowledge. Before I even tell the people about the knowledge, I'm going to apply it first. Once I gained it, once I memorized it, and once I start applying it, and I've applied it for a minute, not just yesterday, and okay, now I'm going to start beating people up, and, brother, you need to do this. Hold on, brother, you should have started doing it yesterday. Do it for about a month or so. Then when you, we, we know that you're really sincere about that sooner that you practice, okay, then you can, you know, give people a reminder. But even when you give a reminder, have wisdom when you do it. The best job was what? By example, I ain't even got to tell you. I just show you whatever it is that I'm trying to show you by you seeing me do it every time you see me do it. Best job was by example. Okay? Best job is by example. Okay? So, alhamdulillah, so we want to get the knowledge and then we want to teach our family, we want to teach our kids, right? And again, we learned about chapter uh, 4, verse 59, uh, with regards to uh, any disputes and whatnot. We'll take it back to the Quran and so on. So, today we're talking about the Willie Lynch papers. Plantation psychosis. And all of this is in a nutshell because everything deals with family. Right? We talked about family. Save yourself and your family. So we're talking about the Williams plantation psychosis because it's dealing with how they broke up our families. How the plantation, uh, 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 um, uh, the plantation and the, uh, the whole process of slavery and having us on the, the, the plantation and whatnot, how it jacked up our psychology. A psychological, you know what I'm saying, thinking process, right? That's what we call it, plantation, psychosis. Something dealing with your psyche, something dealing with your mental. We have a mental jack-up, okay? So I'm going to read from uh, Plantation Psychosis, Willie Lynch papers. This is something that you guys probably heard about. You heard it, the Willie Lynch, that's that Willie Lynch. You got the stench of the Willie Lynch. I um, mean, the, uh, the Plantation Psychosis. This is something that if you've been in the penitentiary or whatnot, this is something that is passed around. You know what I'm saying? That we read. And I just happen to have my paper that was passed around to me. I didn't hold on to this since 2000. I brought it back from the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Still have it. This is what they pass around. A lot of people don't even have access to this no more. Right? I still have mine. My archive. So I'm going to share it with y'all. The same way that they shared it to me, I'm going to share it to y'all. Okay? So I'm going to just read from the book. Okay? And the picture that they have in the front is Harriet Tubman because she was one who freed a lot of slaves. And so when we're talking about plantation psychosis, the Willie Lynch papers, the intent of us is to free our minds from the slavery mentality, right? We ain't slaves in the sense that, you know what I'm saying, but our minds are still shackled, and we have a slavery mentality that we need to break free from. So they use her as uh, an example, and you understand why in some of her quotes. Okay? 
So I'm gonna read from the from the paper and then we'll break it down, you know what I'm saying, inshallah. Okay? Well.